So this is a Sony A7R4 60 megapixel camera with a 200 to 600 uh, millimeter lens. Probably one of the best technical wildlife cameras out there. It's kind of the one to beat. It's, it's just a fantastic kit, but we'll put that aside for a moment. This is actually going to be an M200 review. So I'll get to why I was mentioning that. This is probably the Sony, the Sony, Sony a 7 far four. It's probably not the best camera for you. I mean, to be honest, it's, it's expensive. It's heavy. Um, it's capabilities are beyond what most people can do. And there's some, some different drawbacks. You know, we're in this, this world of bigger is better. And so this is going to be a Canon M200 review. I'm going to tell you what, this camera, as small as it is, I shoot this a lot more than, than the Sony. And there's, there's a reason for that. We'll get in that, but let's jump in the specs. Some of the very positive things, some of the drawbacks and, and why I think, you know, if you're interested in this type of camera, the positive things, give it a look. It's very affordable. So the specs, 24 megapixels. It has the latest pixel or, or GPX9 uh, image sensor, 6.5 frames a second, 60, 50 to 60 JPEGs on high buffer. It clears the buffer extremely well as far as one to two seconds you're back up and running. So the matchup between the frames per second and the buffer is extremely well set up, in my opinion. It's not the fastest camera, but really there's no waiting. Like there's other cameras, my Sony, where you can blaze through 20, 15, 20 and wait because it's 60 minutes. It's trying to clear everything out. This actually does pretty nice. You can just hammer it on it. Just keep going, keep going. And that, but that being said, um, you know, there's, there's 4k video, 24 P there is 1080 P 60. So yeah, it can do pretty much anything you want. I would put it about 85% of what I can do with other cameras. The bigger cameras I can do with this. Now you've seen some video of me doing portrait studio work with the hanging the cameras above some silver work, some creative process. You've seen the backyard birding video um, where I've, you know, had a few photos of different birds in that. And so I've over the last, since probably 2017, last four years, I've done wildlife photography with this little setup, the M100, M200, you know, prairie dogs, birds, deer, you name it, video. It works all really well. Yes, there's some drawbacks, but for a little kit that's almost pocketable, it's a very flexible camera and there's not a whole lot of things. You know, it's got the dual pixel autofocus, which is acceptable. There's nothing really groundbreaking as far as performance with this setup, but portability. And, and that's the main advantage. So on this setup with this 150 to 600, I have about 900 millimeters, 960 millimeter zoom excellent for burning, believe it or not. And the focus works fast enough. It's adequate. Again, image quality is on par with the latest 24 megapixel cameras. You're not missing anything with a little bit smaller setup with the 18 to 400, you're going to get about 640 millimeters along with that. Now it changes substantially for the better for wildlife in video with this, this, this setup being that you get a 2.55 crop. Yeah, so this lens goes out to 1,420 or 80 millimeters. And this lens goes out over to over 1,000 millimeters with 4K. Stabilized, it looks good. So that is just plain awesome if you're a bird watcher. And the nice thing is these affordable, you could put in a small kit, you get a couple of these as a backup. If you're a Canon guy, you might want to throw one of these just in your bag as an emergency thing. It, it can get you out of the pinch. So the ergonomics are a lot of the screen is, is what the big sell is. Now this is marketed towards the YouTuber, the cell phone guys, entry level, which I kind of disagree with because the people that I know that shoot with these, are experienced photographers, but 
I maybe I'm missing something on Canon, and Canon has done some shady things. Or I should say, questionable things with some of the video and some of these other other issues with this camera. But overall, performance-wise, you know, the Canon M mount, you're going to have probably 12 lenses, and then third party, you're going to probably going to have another 12 lenses or so. And then, of course, all the Canon lenses that you get with an EF M mount adapter. So you got plenty of lenses to shoot. It's just not quite as compact and it's not a full robust M, M lens layout that you, that you want, but there's, there's hacks and there's workarounds. So what are some of the drawbacks? So this is made for the entry level photographer, right? That's what they're, they're doing. And they, they have a, a YouTube starter kit where you can get for another hundred dollars, you can get a tripod and some kind of thing. But the biggest thing it misses is there's no EVF. That's that's pretty obvious. They want you to to use the the back the back of the camera, and it's got you know acceptable ergonomics. It's not great, but it, totally serviceable once you get used to it. You have no in body stabilization, so that's that's a little bit of a draw. But and most part, you know, most importantly, the questionable one is no external mic jack. So there's no external mic jack on this, even though it's kind of advertised as a YouTube camera setup, right? So the internal mics are a little rough, kind of echoey. If you go outside, do some video work, you're going to hear a lot of, a lot of crackling. You, video is tough enough as it is without some of these compromises. But the last one that's rough for a YouTuber or someone doing video or starting their vlog is... The crop factor. Now we said the crop factor is awesome for wildlife, but if you're taking a 15 millimeter lens, which is one of their widest, multiply 2.55, you're already almost like 50 to 60 millimeters. That's too close even to push it out to walk around with it. So that is an issue that you're going to have. You know, 4K 2.55 crop is is quite a bit. So. I'm not sure why they hampered it in these two ways. No external, no external mic jack and a huge 4K crop. That being said, you know, the questionable marketing, maybe they didn't want to cannibalize their other, other cameras with the external mic jacks. I don't know why you'd advertise this as like the, the vlogger or the YouTuber when it's not the strongest in class from your other cameras that are pretty close. So would I recommend this? Yes. As I mentioned, I can get 85% of what I do. It's, it's kind of disheartening knowing that such a cheap camera can do the things I want. Autofocus is fast. Image quality is there. Battery life is decent. Three to 800 batteries are cheap. A couple of those go in your pocket. You put on a couple different lenses and you're good to go. Other than that, I'm going to roll some video and some images and wildlife that I've done over a few years here, here and there, and see what you guys think. If you got any questions, comments, concerns, write it down. I just, it's, it's an interesting time for cameras because we kind of go towards bigger is better, this whole marketing situation where, for me, you know, these kind of cameras you take with you everywhere. They're an everyday camera. You can put them on your, your couch. You can take photos, put it back. Where other cameras, you're not going to put it in a bag. You're not going to take it to the shopping, you know, shopping or groceries. In case you see something cool, you're afraid of getting it ripped off. It, it's bigger. It draws attention. This you can put in a small bag and just go. So it fits I think, you know, these smaller cameras just fit people's lifestyle better. And, and that's one of the things. I, I think one of the weaknesses behind a lot of people's photography is they're just not getting enough time behind the camera. So, ask questions again. I will see you folks next week.